Donald Trump's first 100 days better than you would think. Let's take the area that was supposed to be his Achilles heel, foreign policy. After flirting publicly with the likes of John Bolton, Rudy Giuliani, and David Petraeus, Mr. Trump settled on Dark Horse Rex Tursen, the former chief of ExxonMobil, to be his Secretary of State. Like his boss, Mr. Tursen had no prior experience in government, which has turned out so far to be an excellent thing. Unencumbered by the can't-do conventional wisdom of the Foggy Bottom establishment and its parrots in the Washington press corps, Mr. Thurston has played the carrot to Mr. Trump's stick, soothing Chinese feathers ruffled during the campaign with their March visit to Beijing and setting up the successful meeting earlier this month between the Donald and the Chinese president at Mar-a-Lago that coincided with the cruise missile salvo fired at Syria's Bashar al-Assad. Since then, the Chinese have openly cautioned the troublesome regime of Kim Jong-un in North Korea not to antagonize the U.S. with further nuclear saber-rattling in the region. Trump is a man who honors his promises, warned the People's Daily, the ruling party's official newspaper. Among those promises, a better trade deal for China and an ominous presidential tweet to the North Koreans that they're looking for trouble, and signed USA. Even now, U.S. warships are steaming Kim's way. Regarding Russia, Mr. Thurston rocked the former Soviets with the frank discussion in Moscow on Wednesday, the plow speak for contentious. Meanwhile, at the UN, Ambassador Nikki Haley has already proven her mettle, taking a hard line toward the Russians for their tactical alliance with Assad while making clear the U.S. commitment to Israel. Domestically, a first attempt at repealing and replacing Obamacare flopped when Speaker Paul Ryan's needlessly complex better way couldn't muster enough GOP votes to make it to the House floor. But the fault was the ambitious Ryan's. Now the way's clear for a cleaner repeal. And, yes, tax reform's on its way, too. True, the president's two executive orders regarding visitors from several Muslim countries have been stayed by federal judges refusing to acknowledge the plain letter of both the Constitution and the U.S. Code 1182, which give the president plenary power regarding immigration. But the recent confirmation of Neil Gorsuch as an associate justice will quickly clear up that misunderstanding when the cases land in the Supreme Court. Further. The Republicans' use of the nuclear option to eliminate the filibuster for high court nominees means Mr. Trump's next pick is guaranteed a speedy confirmation. Over at the National Security Council, H.R. McMaster has brought order out of the chaos that followed the abortive tenure of Mike Flynn, shuffling some staffers but retaining the services of crucial personnel. And at the Pentagon and Homeland Security, Former Marine Generals James Mattis and John Kelly can be counted on to faithfully execute presidential policy. Worries that they're too soft on radical Islam are unfounded. Less remarked but equally important has been the administration's speedy action on downsizing the federal government, proposing real spending cuts and reorganizing the bloated bureaucracy, which has drawn bleats of protest from the D.C. swamp creatures watching their sinecures circling the drain. Mr. Trump's also lifted the hiring freeze, in order to flesh out a still undermanned executive staff and replace Obama holdovers. Despite these clear successes, the media continues to depict the White House as a floundering, latter-day court of the Borges, a backstabber behind every heiress. But that's to be expected of a novice administration in its infancy. When the smoke clears, look for an uneasy balance of power between Chief Counselor Steve Bannon and Trump's son-in-law Jared Gushner. Mr. Trump can ill afford to lose Mr. Bannon and his die-hard conservative base. And the sooner the floundering White House press operation is rebooted, the better. The administration has played defense against a hostile, sneering media long enough. No new president will ever match the whirlwind of new programs introduced by FBR when he took office during the Depression, the gold standard cited by Democrats who equate activity with action. But Mr. Trump got elected for precisely the opposite reason, less government is more freedom. As long as he keeps that in mind, he, and we, will do just fine. Michael Walsh is an author, screenwriter and contributing editor at PJ Media. His most recent book is The Devil's Pleasure Palace. 
This article originally appeared on the New York Post and was reproduced with permission. Follow www.news.com. Auto. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe SH News channel. Goodbye and see you again. You again.